Hey everyone, KiraStyle here. Welcome back to Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi. If you're not sure what this game is about, maybe you want to check out my first video for this series, so I do a little bit of explanation on what Sengoku Basara is. This game is completely in Japanese, so I am relying on some fan-made translation material to help me through. Today we're going to be playing through Kyogoku Maria's stages. So I'm going to select her here on the free play mode so we can discuss her a little bit before we get going. So, as you can hear, Maria's theme music in the background, it sounds quite exotic. Her own stage itself is themed after almost an Arabian palace sort of aesthetic. So, Maria is the older sister of Azai Nagamasa, so that also makes her Oichi's sister-in-law. She was a new character introduced in Sengoku Basara 4, and then she became playable in this game, Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi. She was a an NPC boss character in the previous game, and her personality is that she thinks that she's the most precious, beautiful thing in the world, and so everything else in the world she kind of judges based on whether or not they're worthy of her. I didn't actually think too much of her in Basara 4, but when she became playable, I quickly fell in love with her character design and also her gameplay. Her gameplay is super fun. And she also partners up with uh, uh, Ashikaga Yoshiteru, a few times. As you can see him down in the bottom right there, who is the boss character of Basara 4 and Basara 4 Sumeragi. So I'm going to use her with Yoshiteru for today. Let's have a look at some of her costumes and stuff. So this is her default costume. This is her second costume. third one, and this one is a Street Fighter collab. And here is Yoshiteru, here's one of his costumes, and this one is a Monster Hunter collab costume. You can see he looks pretty intimidating in that one. I also realized in the last video I forgot to show off Nagamasa's outfit, so maybe I'll do that real quick here. There you are. So here's his default outfit. He's supposed to be like a hero of justice, that's why he does all the Super Sentai poses. He looks pretty good without his helmet, actually. Not sure about the colors of this one, though. This one, he almost looks like a villain. And this is a collab outfit with WWE. He's wearing the outfit of a particular Japanese wrestler that I do not know off the top of my head. His weapon changes into a bell and a microphone. It's pretty neat. Maria fights with ribbons, or pieces of fabric that come from her sleeves. She's actually pretty good at crowd control, she isn't so good at doing one-on-one -on -one boss fights. Here's her joke weapon, and turns her ribbons into snakes. Just equip her default one. And so I mentioned in the last video that, uh, or in two videos ago, so Yoshiteru was kind of the boss character of Basara 4. He is the former shogun who's kind of challenging all the warriors in the country to take his spot as the rulers of the country. He's almost like a godlike existence in the games, and his weapon is kind of strange. It almost looks like a I think they describe it like a baton, it almost looks like a fan to me, 
it's uh, basically a Swiss army knife of weapons. It can change into a bow and arrow, or a spear, or a sword, depending on what move he's using. So his joke weapon is, let's see here, a literal Swiss army knife. <laughs> so we'll keep his regular outfit. His regular cost his uh, weapon. All right, and let's get uh, playing with story mode. So we'll go back to the menu select. All right, so we'll select Maria here. I'm going to pick the second difficulty, the one that's just above normal. Last time I tried the one that was two stages above normal, and it was a little difficult for her. Again, she suffers from being really good at crowd control, but also not being super great at one-on-one -on -one boss fights. And I do want to test out Yoshiteru a little bit today, and he's not quite as leveled as she is. So I will select this one. Hopefully it's not too bad. As you can see, she's a little lewd sometimes. Kyogoku あれ、やはり今すぐ金銀財宝を持って我らの元に下りなさい。断るなら我らの弟が黙ってはいないわよ。たとう。な、な、なんだこれは。いたぞ。乱世に乗じて死に死欲を貪る。浅い仲間さだ。京国マリア
ジトが守る城ならたやすいと攻めてきたな乙女を侮った罪は重いその少年絶対に正してやるナオトラいるわねお風呂に行くわよしたくなさい Alright, so let's spend some time showing off Maria's attacks here. So she attacks using these ribbons on her arms. You can see her attacks have a lot of flow to them. They look really aesthetically pleasing. And her gimmick is that she can wrap soldiers up and bind them in cloth and then also spin them around like spinning tops. So if I use this move, anyone that's standing near her will get wrapped up in cloth and sent spinning. I can also do it using this move. And I also have this one, where you send out cloth flying and they hit some enemies. You can also do a little jump rope. I'm gonna blow a kiss. And I really like her guard animation, it looks pretty cool here. And then I can do this move too. She kind of summons the cloth from the ground, as you can see her movement is a little suggestive there. Here's her taunt. And then her R2 moves, this is one of them. And it doesn't look like much. But if you go up to an enemy that's bound by cloth, she'll suspend them in the air and then she'll judge them based on their appearance and how they attract her. So, and if she likes them, she'll blow a kiss at them and they'll go flying. Or if she doesn't, she'll kind of smack them and then they'll go flying anyways. This one's another interesting one. And again, it doesn't do anything without any enemies right now. But what she'll do is... She'll wrap up some enemies and turn them into sled dogs, so I'll try that one later, show you what it looks like. Lastly, there's this move. And what it does is it attacks every character on the screen, and also seems to attack the cameraman too, so that's pretty amusing. It's not very good for comboing, but it does a lot of good AoE damage. Okay, let's give this a try. So you can see these guys here. Let's wrap them up in some cloth. So I can go up to them and so she'll judge them. And they're not to her liking, so then she kind of blacks them away. And then so I can wrap people up, and I can kind of gather them up, and then... Oh, that killed them. <laughs> now there we go. See, I sent the guy spinning. He's become a spinning top there, doing damage to all his friends. Normally he's wrapped in green, but I have a special item equipped on Maria that makes it so that her moves do more damage. So he's wrapped in kind of a yellow. Wow, those men are so intimidating. Well, Maria can also kind of uh, skip in the air. I can also attack in the air. Make some spinning tops. So she's really good at crowd control because you can just send a bunch of these guys spinning around. As you can see, these men here on this stage aren't very combative. Oh, here come the women. So let's show you this move. So gather some people up. 
And then they turn into sled dogs. And then you can hit the button to mush them, which makes them go faster. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> we thought a bunch of guys just crawling around on their arms and legs like this could be so fast. What an efficient method of transportation. Mush, mush. Come on. Okay, I think that's enough. Uh, <laughs> You can also bind them like this. So every time I take over one of these bases, a few more little units of female warriors come out to try to take it back, gather them up, and send them spinning. Doesn't that look fun? And, uh, people trying to take back their bases. They have some tigers, ah! <laughs> あんたにはわかんないだろ。こんなに古典版にやられる。悔しさってやつ。男子、たまには前に出てみせろ。Too bad she kind of falls a bit while she's skipping like that. If I could remain airborne longer. So as you can see, she's pretty fun to play, just because of all the spinning around, I think is <laughs> really funny. It's really nice too. Wrapped up. And I think if you like taunt, you can also make them. Oh, yeah, there you go. So if you taunt, anyone that's wrapped up gets uh, exploded. Oh, get off me. These tigers are kind of annoying. No, 
ダに抵抗するのね他にやることないのかしら頼りないところを見せたらこうだ分かったな男衆ど,どうかお仕置きだけは逃げ出さなかったことは褒めてやるけどバカだよお前は私たちは一旦下がる男衆はここを抑えるんだヘイそこのお前少し変わりなさいお任せを I think there's a little hidden area up here Followed me here. Goodbye. I'm gonna skip away. If only I had some dudes here I could use as sled dogs. Let's see if I can get some Vasara for. Yoshi Terror. So do a double Basar attack. There we go. I still gotta show off Maria's bizarre attack. Hers is really, really fun. But you need a lot of enemies to do it properly. Ah. Let's get rid of these tigers just so they're not in our way. So people trying to take back our bases. Our Bizarre attacks back up. Maybe we'll use it. So we're fighting now Tora up ahead, who again has a bit of a grudge against men. I think the most, one of the most funny things I find about Naotora is that her personal inscription, her personal weapon ability that you can equip on her, is called Respect Women. Her personal inscription is called Respect Women, and what it does is it makes her do double damage against men and half damage against women, which is pretty useful considering most of the enemies in this game are male. I really like her outfit too. Her music theme too. So let's try our Pissar attack. It's not going to work out well with only one enemy, but we'll do it anyways. So Maria suspends herself in the air, and then you create a little pinball arena. You can use the flippers to hit some enemies. And if you can imagine, if there's like a whole bunch of enemies here, it's really, really chaotic looking. Sorry, Naotora. <laughs> Help me out here, Yoshiter. Oh, 
っと俺たちのこと見張ってやがるま,まあまた会うこともあるかもな Yeah, you spin your weapon there, Yoshiteru. He likes to do that a lot. So many weapons I need to sell. Can't remember if I mentioned this before, but the Star 4 originally you can only hold 20 items or 20 weapons per character, and then with Sumeragi they made it so you can hold 40, which was very nice. But at the same time, I still capped out and end up having to sell them all. It's a little annoying to do after every fight. ね、そ、それは確かに問題。許せ。I'm not really sure why they keep talking about cats. Again, remember this is the first half of her story, so it hasn't branched off yet. Okay, so we can duel with Masamune, we can duel with the three ninjas. There's a confrontation happening right there between uh, Katsui and Toshiie. We can go for Ieyasu or Mitsunari. Let's go after Mitsunari since we've encountered him before. Miare Mitsunari, Ano Hajotsuyo. Ware Rangoto Torikoasa Neba Kingasuma Nurashi. Okay, 
join it. So you might notice the stage is actually the same as Sakon stage. It's the same castle, but the setup is a little bit different. The doors that open are a little bit different as well. I'm going to show off a little bit of uh, Yoshi Terry's moves while we're here. So again, he has a Swiss Army knife of a weapon, so his regular attacks. You can see it switching between a sword and a spear. Finally, a bow and arrow. You can also do this kind of like... Shinpo step. Even when he's guarding. Oops. Oh, I did not mean to do that. So, one of his moves, or his theme is kind of after the roulette wheel. He really likes gambling and leaving things to fate, in other words. So, some of his moves have him spawn like a roulette wheel. And then, depending on which one you land on, you get different buffs. And so, the golden one is the best one, the purple one's a bad one, and then the I think the red one is for speed and the black one's for power. And most of the time the areas for gold are very small, but I have a special item equipped on him that makes it so the entire roulette wheel is evenly distributed. So see, now he has a different buff. So see, he can guard as well, and when you guard, you dodge. He has a little bit of a teleporting step. So I think he has this move, which is a like a grab move. So if you hit an enemy, he tosses them in the air and hits them with some arrows. So it's like a throw. And then you also have a spear rush. Like that. I think this one's like a counter. And then this one releases a bunch of arrows that just kind of continuously rain down in an area. So for his R2 moves, he has this one, where he kind of walks forward intimidatingly with this kind of galaxy aura. And I think it's a counter. If anyone hits him, he teleports behind them and slashes them. He has this move, which is a another roulette wheel. So depending on which one he hits again, it gives him a buff or a debuff. I think I got the bad one here. But again, the item I've equipped not only makes an even distribution of his roulette wheel, but also makes it so the good effects last longer and the bad effects are shorter. So I can like do that. I think the item also makes it so the roulette wheel slows down, so it's a lot easier for me to get what I want. And this move is a button input. Oh, I guess I need enemies around. If I do it, you have to hit three buttons in a row, and then he just kind of creates a large explosion. Let's test out Yoshiteru a little bit. Since he's like the boss character, he does have some pretty flashy moves, but I've never been a super big fan of using him. Let's try this uh, explosion move. It's pretty neat. Let's try his counter move. Hit me. Hit me. Someone hit me. Oh, that was pretty cool. Let's try it this one. Oh, Let's do. Oh, oh yeah, it's a counter. That's pretty neat. And then I have this move, which is the grab. I think I need to hold it. Ah! Oh. There we go. Alright, so we're trying to break down this door, I think, and we gotta guard these battering rams. 
Oh right, I forgot how annoying this is. So, I think as long as I'm standing in it... Oops. I think as long as I'm standing in it, they're moving forward, but you gotta kinda guard it. Well, oh, there's three of them too, that's... <laughs> this will be fun. I'll take care of this one first. This turns Super Saiyan. Oh, maybe it's the, maybe it's the, maybe it's the black one that's bad and not the purple one. Kind of blocks out my screen, including my UI. Okay, I want to use Ashikaga's Basara attack. Rains down a whole bunch of swords. Got some unlimited blade work going on around here. Oh my gosh. I'm pressing that button by accident. Okay, now we'll switch back to Mario. Looks like my other battering ram is on the way. Let's play some pinball. Oh, <laughs> I think Sakon's coming for me. Some characters have custom encounter cutscenes, and this is one of them. Since Sakon's one of the main characters of Sara 4, and Murray is a special NPC. Let's play pinball with all these guys. Look at this, so much fun. Stop on around here. Oh, there you are. Oh, let's go. Let's go judge him. すぎ like how we go back to the somber music after we defeat Sakon. Okay, better get my battering ram back on track. This one actually made it pretty far without my assistance. Oh, 
I think you get a bonus if you're able to get all these battering rams without having one of them ever completely deplete on health, but who's got time for that? It's a lot easier on multiplayer, you can get one person to guard each one. So up ahead is Yoshitsuku. He's Mitsunari's uh, kind of main tactician right hand man alongside Sakon. He was introduced with Mitsunari in Basara 3, so he's been around a little bit longer. And he's kind of scheming and evil. He's covered in bandages completely because historically Yoshitsugu was, uh, had leprosy. So the idea in Basara is that Yoshitsugu has been mistreated his whole life and now he wants to rain down kind of suffering upon the whole world and he's going to use Mitsunari to do that. It was actually kind of shown in Mitsu in a, in a, not Mitsunari, but a Yoshitsugu's story mode that he actually does care about Mitsunari on the inside and it's shown that uh, instead of wanting the whole world to suffer, he actually does have a genuine interest in Mitsunari's well-being since Mitsunari kind of treats him more for his abilities than he does for his his uh, appearance or anything like that. So that's surprisingly sweet for a character that I... It's kind of evil and a character that I didn't really feel attachment towards at the beginning. He's pretty fun to play as, too. Ooh, so he like fights on this palakin and sh shoots these kind of prayer beads at you. So he's pretty interesting as a character in terms of gameplay. Characters like him can't be bound by the ribbons either. Characters that sit atop some kind of device. So there's a couple other ones, or characters that are too large. Oops, I accidentally activated my maximum style gauge, which makes the screen blurry but also slows down time. Look at the very glamorous death pose. He's just kind of fallen over completely backwards. And then we have Mitsunari. Or, I guess we will after this. I think there's more battering rams that we have to protect. Look at these guys on stilts. Very, very powerful battle tactic. Turn your spears into stilts. Of course.
Oh gosh, they cancelled me out of it! How dare you! I'm putting on a show for you, come on. What? Come on, come on, let me finish. There we go. See how everyone on the screen kind of fell to the side? So in Basara 3, characters had, or most characters had, three R2 moves, and you can choose before battle which one you wanted to equip. In Basara 4, you can equip all of them and you can actually switch between them in battle. So they're not like ultimate skills, because like some people call them ultimate skills. I think the Basara attack is more of an ultimate skill. But I guess it depends what your definition of ultimate is. They are usually stronger than your other conventional attacks. We're hit. Okay, let's go face Mitsunari, the man himself. あとは。お願いします。我らが大将。すでに許可はいただいている。英語に使え続ける許可を。白の雲よ。火を隠せ。この心に差し明かるみよう。一つ残らず。しゃべってしろ。You can also do this if you bind people. Oops, dodged it. There you go. So since you can't turn bosses into sled dogs, that attack just uh, binds them instead. So Mitsunari's basic story is that he takes over the Toyotomi after Hideyoshi's death, and then the country becomes split between his western army and Ieyasu's eastern army, so that's the main plot of Basara 3. It's this division of the country between east and west. Oh good, no weapons. <笑>思ったとおり、猫車って書いてきね。それに可愛いわ。頑張って。猫さんたち。いつも応援してるから。わ、私としては気の毒すぎて見ていられんのだが。あら、笑顔を引けるのだから幸せに決まっているわ。せっかくだし猫をもっと用意させましょう。な、何？そうね。病理哀れみの例とでも名付けようかしら。た、確かに哀れみを覚えるが、いやいや、何かが違う気がするぞ、あれ上。なるのがもそう。あなたが代わりにな
かしなしかとしょ<笑>待ってくださいっすおやっさん<笑><笑>ねえおやさん、ハル様はどうしてどこへ消えたんでしょうか徳川家康、近海に巨大な影よ<笑>豊臣を追われたサジン。We've already done Morochika's stage. And we've already fought Senno Rikyu. So I think this one's a duel against Shikonosuke. So let's do let's do Ieyasu's stage. So again, Ieyasu was、uh, also a retainer of Hideyoshi Toyotomi. And he was actually in the first two Pissara games as well. But he was a young boy in that one, and he was he wielded a spear. And in Bizarre Three, he got a major glow up and became a young man and started fighting with his fists and grew a lot more muscular, kind of befitting of his role as kind of the main character or one of the main characters of Bizarre Three. And so during Bizarre Three,、uh, or the events leading up to it, but,、uh, Ieyasu betrays Hideyoshi and kills him. And then basically says that, oh, he was a tyrant, and I'm gonna unite the country under these bonds of friendship. And of course, Mitsunari didn't take a liking to that because Mitsunari worshipped Hideyoshi, so that's why the country gets split between Ieyasu's eastern army and、uh, Mitsunari's western army, which leads up to the Battle of Sekigahara, which is kind of like the final battle in Basara 3 to determine the fate of the country. And, Historically, Ieyasu comes out on top. So, the, the thing about Ieyasu is he has a retainer named Tadakatsu Honda. And Tadakatsu is, well, historically was a legendary samurai. Defeated, like, I think, like, rumored, like, hundreds of samurai fought them and survived. So, he was, like, supposed to be super ultra powerful. So, in the games, they made it so that he was so legendary and powerful that he is actually a machine. So, he is. He doesn't actually talk, he talks using like the sound of like exhaust fumes and gears grinding. So he's very loyal to Ieyasu, and Ieyasu almost kind of does the talking for him. People in the fandom joke his name is Hondam, like Gundam, because that's basically what he, what he is. He has a jetpack and he has a giant drill that pierces the heavens. So on most stages with Ieyasu, what you're doing is you have to run away from Tadakatsu because he's so invincible. Until you can get to Ieyasu and take him down. Of course, when my character is finally leveled up and strong enough, you can actually take down Tadakatsu before encountering Ieyasu as well. So, I think I should be able to on this difficulty. どうしてもというならばまずわしを撃ってもらおうかあら出直した方がいいかしらでもだね面倒だもの I want to let them finish talking before he encountered him わしは時をかけすぎたその果てにようやく見つけた答えがこれださあわしと結ぼうタイマの絆をただかずお前は人知れず無理をしすぎなんだ頼むからそれ以上わしを心配させないでくれ一歩たりとも引きはしないくせに追うものがある限りあらいい<笑> Destroyed with a kiss <笑> Here comes Tadakatsu picking him up He likes to ride around on Tadakatsu's back. Oh, something's going wrong there. 
So anyone that knows me, or any of my friends that know me, would say that Ieyasu is a very Kiro style character. Like, his design, like the fact that he's like a fist fighter and boxes, his physique is kind of like, matches up a lot with some of my other favorite characters in the games, or in games in general. And I admit he really does. Ieyasu fits a lot of my aesthetics, but there's a few reasons why he isn't quite as high on my favorites list in this game as you would think. I'll talk about it more because I do plan to do a playthrough with him, but there's a few reasons why I am not quite as fond of Ieyasu as one might expect. But he's definitely my type of character in terms of aesthetics. Okay, so I think on this stage what you're doing is they're trying to deliver all these boxes to repair Tarakatsu, or basically buff him and make him stronger, so I have to go and stop all of them. It's actually a little bit difficult to get all of them, except unless you're playing with a high level character or lower difficulty, but I'll, I'll try it. Sometimes it means you have to ignore the bases too, because you're trying to go and take these boxes. Come on, help me out, Yoshi Terror. There we go. So you can stop the production of those boxes if you can take over the bases. There should be a base up here too. There's like a machine gun up there to be wary of. There's another box being deployed. Better get there quickly. spinning tops to increase my power. Okay, let's go running after the next. I think there's a zip line somewhere here. But that's okay. There it is. Maria's not super fast either. You can see her just kind of hopping along here. Ah, I'm getting hit by a machine gun. I think you can also hijack them, and they're quite useful at taking down the boxes that way, but... Gonna run to the next one. Ah! over this space and then go back for the other one. <laughs> you see those guys turn into a tornado? They're like spinning around on their with their spears attached. <laughs> Very effective battles tactics. Who needs like weapons and, like guns and stuff when you can just become a human tornado? <laughs> Ah, very effective, okay. I'm gonna run ahead to the next box before we go back to take over that base. I know there's a couple like zip lines around here, but uh, we'll just go find those later. Create some mayhem with some tops. Oh, 
That chaos. Take over the base while we're here. I think Tadakatsu's nearby. I can see his icon. Okay, now I can work backwards through the stage and. Take back all those boxes. You become my weapons. Spinning tops of death. So Maria is hard to use if there aren't enough like foot soldiers to just convert. I think one of the ingenious things about Basara is that because all the enemies are human shaped, because obviously we are fighting a war against humans, you can make all these nutty moves because all the enemy models are human shaped. So you could do a lot of these things for oh look he's launching. So if like we were playing an action RPG in like a fantasy world, and that fantasy world had a lot of uh, like, beasts, wolves, monsters, you wouldn't be able to do all these nutty moves because you have to make separate animations for all of their grabs and what happens during that. Okay, so I'm gonna activate hero time, because the Tadakatsu is pretty strong. Or maximum style gauge, if you will. So, since he's a large character, he's also uh, very difficult in terms of you can't bind him with ribbons, uh, he can't ride a horse, he does get knocked about, down by a lot of things because he's just so large. Ow. Oops, I almost got into a duel with him there. Oh no, they took back the base. The thing with getting into duels with NPCs too is that different NPCs have different duel strengths too, like Tadakatsu and Shimazu are tougher to beat in duels compared to Hideaki and characters like him who are kind of wimps. You can see in the way they've animated their dual animations too. You'll, hopefully you'll see them later when I do a playthrough with some of those characters. For example, Hideaki, when he does a duel, he actually doesn't like attack back. He just kind of sits there and takes it, cowering under his hot pot. Or Unishige is so powerful that when you do a duel, he. Oh gosh, see, this is a little harder. So if you do Munishige, when he duels, he actually doesn't attack, he just defends, but he's so strong that even his defending is enough to fend you off. Oh gosh. Uh, oh, I didn't even finish the duel. Let's pull out another Basara attack. Okay. I really should take advantage of those machine guns. 
me, I'll just take out the guy. Oops, that's not the right attack. There you are. Come on, Tadakatsu. Am I even... Doesn't even look like it's actually damaging him. Yeah, I'm gonna overheat pretty soon. Get back here. I need to catch a ride with some sled dogs. Okay, turn around. Eat some jump rope. You help me too, Yoshi Terror. Like I said, you're not usually supposed to actually defeat him, but I will do it anyways because I can. So it just kind of powers down. It's never acknowledged by the characters of Basara 2 that Tadakatsu is obviously like machine or something more than a man. They just kind of act like as if he is a regular person. I hope he doesn't recover. I remember on some stages, Tadakatsu actually recovers. If you give him long enough time. The most annoying thing is that when you're trying to fight Ieyasu, most of the time if you haven't killed Tadakatsu, he'll come in and make it harder for you. ばに。我らの意志を I'm not usually a big fan of doing Ieyasu stages, so I try to avoid them just because of... They're usually really annoying because of Tadakatsu. There's like bomb guys here. That's the way to get back. I could have sworn there was a, a shortcut. Ow! What the hell? Oh, that was. That's Yoshi Terror. I need some sled dogs. There we go. Much better. Ah, it's hard to turn corners. Mush, mush, mush. <laughs> They're calling her name too. Maria Sama. Here we go. Oops, I meant to just cancel out of that, I didn't mean to <laughs> Basara attack him. Yeah, 
そうじゃないこうして掴むからこそ価値があるんだよ強国殿手加減はしないだからしっかりと身を守ってくれよ I always forget to use the R1 moves just because because Sakon doesn't really use R1 because it just switches its stances so when I play other characters I always forget they have an R1 attack or death by jump rope I love those dramatic death animations. Some characters have some really good ones. You only see it when you fight them as NPCs and not when you use them. Good, no weapons. Yes, you saw much to mother Katazida. Cost the Iran. You saw the lay no Jim Bini Torikara never. Oh, no, no, so. So no Sakazuki were no me. Ima Kara each to Keko never said no Kashira. Oh, no, Mukasini still so. Yeah, so the one I could. Hachu no mono no Nakodo than I. Nani say. 一生に一度の出来事だからな主君として恥をかかせぬよう今から演習に励まねばうんじゃあその結婚夫婦の誓いはわらわにしてもらおうかしらは何を言っている姉上夫婦揃ってわらわに尽くすと誓いを立てさせるの<笑>これってとっても素敵じゃないそうねどうせなら白むくももっとひらひらにしてま待つのだ姉上それ以上はいかん姉上姉上<音声> Okay so this is where the story mode diverges into the different endings So we've done three stages <音声> Okay, so again, most characters have a blue root, this blue scroll here. It's also called the drama root because usually they have more dramatic endings. And then if I pick anything else, I'll get a normal ending, which is called the creation ending or the Sengoku creation ending. So we're gonna go with the drama route because I know for Maria you get a pretty fun ending with that one. So it looks like we're gonna get into a duel with Nagamasa and Oichi. あれ。お陰で部下の挙式が台無しではないか。あら、何のこと死んだ新聞を感激で結びないでいたじゃない。あれは悲しみに嘆いていたのだ。全く。姉上もいい加減、夫を持ち、家族、そして夫婦とは何
I'm going to boss one-on-one -on -one fight with Maria is kind of difficult because I don't have any spinning tops that I could use for the soldiers. It's kind of funny how there's a horse on the stage in the background too, even though it's just an arena. What would I do with it? <laughs> Getting grabbed by Oichi is not very fun. Get her. Oh god, her move is still going. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, for the drama routes, the uh, the stage orders are predetermined. So that's why once I pick this route, I don't get a choice of which stages I get to do. Next stage is going to be stock on stage, which we've done before. It's the gambling one. It can be a little bit annoying if you lose the first dice roll since it cuts your HP very small. Oh, <laughs> ま、ここ。さあさあ、イカ様抜きで貼っ次は負けねえぞ。あら、かけごとかしら。そういえば、よしてるもあれが好きだったわね。あ。わらわもちょっと言って花婿探しにかけてみようかしら。来なさい。<笑> <あっと、お客さんかい? 笑> べっぴんさんは歓迎だけど、イカ様だけはご法度だぜ。そうね。わらわの美しさは他の女から見たらイカ様みたいなものかもね。あ。ああ。そうっすね。This <笑><笑> laugh is so cute. Yuichi <笑> Nakamura is so good. ちょいと俺と7番勝負ってのは Okay, so we're playing on a lower difficulty than we were with Oichi, so I might be able to get away with... ...with, uh, not focusing the base too much before knocking Sakon out and then quickly taking it over. Look at him just stuck in the spinning top. Okay, there he is. 
Okay, we're an even number on this one. Oh, already even. Nice. あんた道に迷いでもさ。道なり様が戻る前に入った方がいいと思うよ。ラビエン。ラビエン、ラビエン、ラビエン。あ。ああ、いや。女を連れ込んでると思われて、俺が叱られるというか。That's not even. No. No. <laughs> okay. I'll take that debuff. Catch a ride. Going this way. Made a big spinning top this time. <laughs> He's just stuck on it. <laughs> Oh, he got one guy. Oh, that's okay. There's still another base on top of that one. It's so hard to see unless you actually move out. There we go. Okay, now I'll take care of Sakon. Where is he? Is he spinning in there? Oh, there he is. Okay, even again? No. Okay. Don't hit it, don't hit it. And again, notice that this stage is the same as Mitsunari's stage, but the order in which we're attacking the bases and the, the way the doors are open is different, but it still creates that same shape. They do that a lot in Basara 3 and 4. To make a new stage, some of them will just have variations where you'll go through the stage, but they'll change the lighting. Or well, they'll change the order, or maybe they'll start you at the end of it, instead of at the beginning, and you have to go backwards through it. And it's actually not immediately noticeable unless you actually know the stages really well, so it's actually, I think it's pretty cool. Kind of like a way of doing 
like palette swaps without making it too obvious, you know? He's getting wrecked by that spinning top. Oh god, I can't get in because of this ninja. Still evens. That's odd. Cool. Wait, that's good. Also, up ahead is Tenkai and Hideaki again with the food competition. And one thing I didn't notice in the last video until I was watching it back was when you're fighting Hideaki and Tenkai here and they imagine all the soldiers as food, your character also gets imagined as food, so Oichi was actually holding on to a crab in her hand for that one. So I think when I go in here, uh, Yoshiteru and Maria are going to get crabs spawning on their heads, which is quite amusing actually. Watch for this. Yoshiteru has a giant crab on his head, and I have a little mini one. No, oh, they're already ahead. It's my dawdling. A giant crab. <laughs> I was kind of, I was also going to try to use my Bizarre attack, but I realized I lost it because of that diva. Ah, Hideaki, stop it. This might be closer than I thought. I'm going to use hero time for maximum style time. Where's all the enemies? それにしまとみつけてるそのめんみたいなものなんだか変態っぽくて気持ち悪いわ。これは予想だ。人に出しまえ。これが日々の仕事。このクラブ so if you knock out Hideaki and Tenkai, the competition automatically ends without the timer going down. We also didn't get that cutscene where I'm skipping rope with him. Maybe it's because we already saw it one time on this playthrough. Oh no, he's using his Basara attack. Guard and run away. あの、目に見え、突き刺されそうな危ない髪型。何て言ったかしら。ウィーイ。ミスターの顔のことかよ。いいとけど、勘違いすんなよ。あの髪は勝ち物とかじゃねえから。もう、笑うのはそこまで言
この人にこれ以上関わっちゃまずいそうささやくんだぜ俺のサイコロがこの前の博打の負けはいいからさ普通の時は呼んでくれよもう終わりそれともわらわの魅力のせいにどっちにしてもわらわにふさわしくはなかったわね So, Maria gets a unique dual cutscene with Saka on, which we saw earlier when she's jumping rope with him. She also has a unique one with Katsui, which is quite、uh, entertaining to watch. Unfortunately, we didn't encounter Katsui on this playthrough,、uh, because if I picked the stage with Katsui fighting Toshii, I wouldn't get it, because it was just a duel between the two of them that I was intruding on. Maybe we'll see it in a, a future episode, or if I do a bonus episode with some free play. Or you can look them up on YouTube. There's people who've made compilations of the Basara dual cutscenes, which are all fantastic. Puts the anime to shame, and the anime is not bad either. To now, Tora's, and this time with a dojo stage. So, this one's new for Sumeragi. It's basically a set of trials that now Tora has kind of set up. It's actually kind of difficult if you don't know what you're doing. I know I failed this stage a lot of times before I read up a guide on it, especially on higher difficulties.、Uh, she sends waves of enemies after you, and for each one, you have to complete a couple specific tasks. And every time you complete one, you get some manliness points. And then at the end, she duels you and she puts like a cover over her sword with some Japanese kanji on it. And your health bar gets replaced by your manliness points. So if you earned five manliness points, then you only get five hit points for that second last duel with her. Or if you got ten, then you only have ten hit points. And so it's a little difficult because if you just get hit once, you lose one of those points. いいものは見つからないわね退屈なのも不愛想なのも武骨すぎるのもダメお坊様は無理鍋は論外博打好きは意外とまともでつまらないこのまま旅を続けても正直出会える気がしないわ誰かさんみたいなことを言うのは嫌だけど乱世にはろくな男がいないのねそうだあの子がいたじゃないあの子ならからかいがいもあるしうん他の誰よりも男らしい<笑>決めたわ待っていなさいわらわが幸せを運んであげるから来なさい<笑>乙女の強さを知り乙女を敬えこの道場でそれを叩き込んでやる So this first part is kill as many enemies as possible ごめんねえなおとら I call it sounds like wedding music in here Kind of an interesting coincidence we encountered both Nao Tora and Sagan earlier in this story mode, because, like I said, the first three stages are always semi randomized. And then the second, the last three are depending on the route you take. So it's kind of funny that we got a chance to introduce Nao Tora earlier. So this makes a little bit more sense in context. There's some tigers in here too. I'll be in trouble, so let's try to get rid of them. Oh, there's, ah, there's more. 
Oh no, no, I didn't mean to do my bizarre attack. I guess we're doing it. Did a tiger knock me back in the middle of my bizarre attack? That's screwed. Are you built up my Pissar meter? Big time's running out. So I think next week we get to fight Naotora for a little bit. I like how her little ponytail holder looks like a mini veil too. So I think this next part is you have to win a duel with one of these women. Oh no, come on. There we go. I didn't mean to pause the game. breaker thing, or the base breaker thing. I'm not usually very good at this one. The timing is very finicky, you gotta be, like, perfect. Aww. Well, I was hitting the wrong button. Because it, it was a circle prompt, but I was supposed to hit square. Okay, well that's fantastic. If you do hit it though, you get a like a bunch of cool effects, like there's a bunch of kanji that appear on the screen. Oh, I'm so disappointed, I, <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I was like, oh, it's a circle, because it's shaped like a circle, that makes sense. Okay, so now, now Tora's gonna appear, and my health bar is gonna be replaced by manliness points. So. 
ネタには that's one way to get yourself a woman. <laughs> that little sweat drop. Okay, so now we fight her in a normal fight. Where is she? ながまさの部下の修練を取り仕切ったこともあるのよ。さあ、やっぱり変だ。女同士で練習になんとならないだろう。笑う、真似をして言ってみて。おお、変に何の異臭だ。気にしないの。これは異国式の修験よ。そうか。それなら私の知らなくて当然だね。まあ、普通の修験もろくに知らないな。ところでマリア、これは一体どっちが男で、どっちが女役なんだ。私には違いがわからないが
sell this one. And then, oh, maybe this one. Okay. So now Tora stage. Then we did Mitsunari stage. Ieyasu stage. Then we had a duel with Nagamasa and Oichi. I still don't know why. Sakon stage. And then now Tora's dojo. ふさわしいのはわらわだけ。やっぱり日の元はわらわを中心に回っているのね。困ったわ。誰かわらわを捕まえて。その時代は千年の時を超えて繁栄を極めるのであった。And there we go. Back to the title screen. So that was Maria's story. She's pretty fun to play. She's uh, got a unique play style, very fluid motion of her fabric. I really like how like inventive it is. And she's just a really fun character. And voiced by Miyuki Saojiro, so that's a plus two. So thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Sengoku Pissar 4 Sumeragi. That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Goodbye.